TJ Hunt has become one of the most influential channels in the tuning and automotive community. With over 2 million subscribers, he has quickly become one of the most recognizable YouTubers in the automotive space. Not only for his videos, but for rebuilding supercars, creating his own parts, and even wide body kits. What I find most fascinating about TJ Hunt is not only his growth and success on YouTube, but how he was able to create multiple successful companies independent from the YouTube platform. It's truly inspiring. Over the years, he has developed such a cult-like following that his channel now brings in close to 4 million views per month. That's almost $30,000 just from YouTube ad revenue. Crazy thing is, this is likely one of his lowest paying revenue streams. So how does TJ Hunt, who just films himself making car parts and rebuilding supercars, become so successful and make millions of dollars at the same time? Maybe he knows something about entrepreneurship and business that the rest of us don't. In today's video, we're going to break down the TJ Hunt success story and figure out how he went from dropping out of college to absolutely crushing the YouTube car niche and making millions of dollars at the same time. Not only that, but I'll also be pointing out any important business strategies or entrepreneurial traits that we see TJ Hunt possess throughout the breakdown of the story. And trust me, there's quite a bit. So if you're interested in starting your own business, rebuilding a car, or even cracking the YouTube algorithm, then make sure to have a pen and paper ready as we dive right into his story. To begin, TJ Hunt's real name is Thomas, and he was born in 1994 in Montreal, Canada. Shortly after being born, his family moved to San Diego, California, which is where he spent most of his life growing up. Early on, his childhood mainly revolved around hockey, and being so dedicated to the sport, it gave him the freedom to travel across the country. During a few of his trips, he would make videos with his team and edit them in iMovie. This was kind of his first real introduction into creating videos, editing them, and also when he discovered YouTube. He joined YouTube shortly after and his first channel was for skateboarding videos in the hopes to get a sponsor. He would then create the channel that you know today, which at first was for paintballing before it was for cars. I know it's been probably what a month since I've made a video and done anything got suspended somehow from YouTube, suspended my account. Back in high school, he really got big into the paintball community, and if you scroll all the way back on his channel, you can see that was his first video. Growing a small following on YouTube, he continued to make videos, but eventually fell off to pursue other things. It was only a hobby after all. During his gap year from YouTube, he really grew his passion for supercars, which is understandable growing up in California, you kind of see them all the time. It wasn't until he got his driver's license and got his first car, a BMW 328i, that every Everything truly started to fall into place. He even picked back up on YouTube after taking a three-year break. Immediately, he fell in love with anything that had to do with tuning cars. He joined all the forums, modified his car, and was watching all the car YouTubers. But that's when things took a turn for the worse. His girlfriend, who he was head over heels for, dumped him during his freshman year of college. He became super depressed, and it took months for him to get better. Trying to find anything to distract himself, he came up with an idea. He started to vlog himself with his car. This was a way for him to cope with his breakup while also sharing what he's going through and his passion for cars. He kind of wanted to merge the videos that he was already watching into his own style, combining the relationship couple channels that he watched during his breakup with the automotive community. Today is the start of my new series of videos. Some slight vlogging and taking you in with my experience with living the car life. This reminds me of the quote, breakups create bodybuilders, and TJ Hunt's story reminds me of something similar. You see, breakups are some of the most creative incidents that happen to people. Oftentimes, breakups or the thought of one happening have enough power to create things that no one could ever believe they could accomplish. In order to cope, people tend to obsess or fixate on something to distract their minds. Not only does it create bodybuilders, but as you can see here, it creates YouTubers, businessmen, leaders, actors, and a whole lot of other things. This is exactly what TJ Hunt did. If channeled the right way, you can become quite successful in whatever you choose to spend your time on. And that's where the quote, breakups create bodybuilders come from. On the other hand, if channeled the wrong way though, it can create alcoholics, drug addicts, and other things I'd rather not talk about. Fortunately, TJ Hunt used YouTube as a way to cope, and with that, he bought a new Subaru BRZ after seeing his best friend Calvin get one, and he started making tons of videos with his car, reviewing it, modifying it, changing the exhaust, 
dust, going to car shows and even rapping it. You can see early on, YouTube was definitely a way to distract himself. And it was a way for him to document his journey in the car community with his friends. He made tons of videos, practically working himself to death to distract his mind from his breakup. What's surprising to me though, is even while all this was going on, DJ Hunt knew how to crack the YouTube algorithm. You can see he learned early on to use keywords like how to in his title, which led to those videos going absolutely viral and building his subscriber count tenfold. For those wanting to start a channel, it's important to remember that some 86% of YouTube viewers say they regularly turn to the platform to learn something new. That's why how to videos where the YouTuber is explaining something or advising their viewers gain the most attention on YouTube, more than music and even gaming. Remember this if you plan to start a channel and keep it in mind when you look at other successful YouTubers. TJ Hunt was surprisingly still in college while his YouTube channel was blowing up and he was also getting paid quite a bit for monetization. Each month he would make more and more than the last. First it's 3k a month, then 6k, even 20k a month, all while spending most of his time in school. When summer hit, he started making videos every single day and he realized how powerful having an audience was, which led to him getting sponsors or even reaching out to companies to advertise their car parts for a discount. At 100k subscribers, he started his own clothing line called Hunt and Company and immediately sold out on his first drop. The clothing line was a huge success and his audience loved it and he made the decision not to go back to college. I don't think it was till the point where I made more money on YouTube than I would have as if I would have graduated and been in nursing at a hospital. That's when it clicked for me. I excused myself from the table and I left. And I walked out of that class knowing I would never sit in a classroom ever again. That was it for me. Notice the decision TJ Hunt made. This is called opportunity cost. This is the value of what you lose when choosing between two or more options. When you decide, you feel that the choice you've made will have better results for you regardless of what you lose by making that choice. As an investor, opportunity cost means that your investment choices will have immediate and future losses or gains. Take for example, the opportunity cost for TJ Hunt was whether or not to stay in college or to drop out. If he dropped out, he wouldn't get his nursing degree and potentially make $100,000 a year, but he would now be able to pursue YouTube 100%, which obviously could be a lot more rewarding. Now, if he stayed in school, then he could only focus on YouTube about half the time, 50%, and miss out on making potentially millions. Having made that decision, his clothing brand didn't come without its hiccups. He got into legal trouble with the apparel company he partnered with, and it brought a lot of unwanted attention from the internet. A lot of accusations have been made about me and Hunt and Company and that partnership that was that. So this is my response and all of that to clear the air. After everything was said and done, he finally regained control of Hunt and Company and was able to regrow the business with the help from his new girlfriend, Sabrina, and his best friend, Calvin. They spent all their time managing the business, answering the emails, creating the shirts, and even packaging the products. Together as a team, they were able to turn Hunt and Co. into what is today a multi-million dollar brand. With his company back on track, it allowed TJ Hunt to focus on what he does best, making YouTube videos and having fun. Unfortunately, his girlfriend was diagnosed with brain cancer. I had a seizure on July 8th, which led them to finding a mass on my right temporal lobe area. Turns out a week and a half later, we learned that unfortunately it is a cancerous tumor. But together, they were able to power through that, sharing their experience on his channel. And his channel grew even further with the personal connection he brought. The builds on his channel got even bigger, and he was able to wide body his BRZ and even add a GTR, a 350Z and an RX-7 to the channel. But it wasn't until he started rebuilding supercars that his channel really started to blow up. He posted a video buying a wrecked 458 and it went absolutely viral, taking his videos from 250,000 views to over 1 million views per video. He realized that he had tapped into an insanely popular niche on YouTube and went all in. He started wide bodying all of his cars and buying more salvage cars to rebuild. And with that came the birth of his next company called Street Hunters. This was his second company dedicated to creating wide body kits inspired from the new Toyota Supra. He figured if he was already known for putting wide body kits on cars, why not make his own? And he did just that. Within the first year of starting his own company, he outsold brands that had been in the business for years. We outsold 
Pandem on their super kits. All in all, the things that TJ Hunt has been able to accomplish in just a few years is incredible. But what I really want to do is break down all of his revenue streams. Over the years, TJ Hunt has been able to create a profitable YouTube channel, which gets paid through ad revenue. He also gets sponsors, has a clothing brand, a wide body kit brand, and he also flips his cars. Now to start, if we use a YouTube revenue calculator like Social Blade, it can give us a pretty good estimate on how much they are earning. Now Social Blade is pretty accurate in regards to views and subscriber growth, but they aren't that great in determining what a YouTuber's revenue is. But if we use my channel for reference, you can see my channel CPM is $7.50 around that. And I'd like to categorize my channel as finance and cars. So I think it's pretty accurate to use for this equation. Using about $7.50, we can see that TJ Hunt's channel just off YouTube revenue alone is bringing in around $360,000 a year. Just remember, YouTube keeps 45% of that. So his ad revenue is closer to $200,000 a year. But if you do the math, since this channel brought over 644 million views, that comes out to about $2.6 million overall. But no one knows for sure unless he decides to reveal his earnings. Moving on to his clothing brand and sponsors, if we check out the video I made on DDE, you can see Damon mentioned that he gets paid around $25,000 to accept a sponsor. I did an electric toothbrush offer. Yeah, I did six figures. I charged $25,000 for that. And because they have a similar audience and subscriber count, I'd likely think it's a good reference to what TJ Hunt can get on a sponsor. And also, if you want to watch my video on how Damon and Dave from DDE became millionaires, then make sure to click that link right over here. Moving on to his Street Hunter wide body company, you can hear him say that he sold over 30 wide body kits within his first year of business. We outsold Pandem on their super kits. So in the first year, company brand new, I think we sold like 35 full kits first year. Given that these kits can cost upwards of $8,500 and he sold over 30 in his first year, it's over 250 grand. Now, since he's only become more successful since then and expanded his inventory to other cars, I would expect those numbers have increased quite severely in the past couple of years. Moving on to his apparel company, if we use a website tracker, we can get a rough idea of how much money he can make from his merch website. Now, since his website seems to pull a similar amount of traffic as the DDE website I reviewed in the last video, the tracker seems to give a rough estimate that his website alone through merch grosses him roughly one million dollars in revenue which is incredible and i'd likely think that tj hunt can do the same thing if not even more. Lastly, since TJ Hunt sells some of his builds after he's done with them, it's likely that he's making a profit or at least breaking even. Now, this means that the builds itself make him money and pay for all the parts that goes into it. So in theory, his YouTube videos on the builds will have an extremely high profit margin. Of course, he has expenses like paying his employees and the tools needed to run his operation, then the rent itself to have his warehouse. But all in all, I'd likely think he's bringing in well over $1 million a year. It's often in that I see a pattern in successful entrepreneurs and TJ Hunt is a perfect example. They all have a dedicated mindset and a passion to ride things out. Unfortunately, this is the end of the story for now, but I know there is a lot we'll see from TJ Hunt. With that being said, make sure to subscribe and like the video if you haven't already. And if you want to see the video about how rebuilding supercars made daily driven exotics millionaires, then make sure to check the video out right over here. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.